All right, guys, on this week's Obscure App of the Week, we're actually going to go over two for the price of one here. So we are going to go over Kapowar and Kamga so that you can end up being able to view comic books on a tablet or a surface like this. Uh, this aspect ratio is honestly way more enjoyable than I thought. Never really been into comics, but this has been a fun little side project. I had a couple of hard copies of the original Rick and Morty's right when that show came out, and uh, I don't think I've looked at them since. Uh, but I got this set up last night, and I was reading through them digitally for probably two and a half hours, and it was way more fun than I would have anticipated. So, again, none of this condones piracy, so please make sure you're only downloading stuff that you legally own or legally backing up however you want to do that whatever so we're going to go over two things uh kapowar ends up god motorcycle hold on kapowar ends up being uh like your radar and the other one is kamga and that's going to be uh like your your viewer uh so you can actually read these things so here is a view of Kapow R. So it looks really familiar. I believe it's in that air framework or whatever they call it. So it looks a lot like radar and sonar and all the rest of the R's. Um, I'd imagine it's some sort of fork. So it looks similar, but it's really different. You'll notice there's very limited settings on the side here. Um, and, you know, it doesn't deal with usenet or setting any of that up it just is going to load these straight from web pages that have them again only download them if you are legally allowed to in your area or you own the hard copies for them so just for demonstrations you know you can see this original rick and morty is 60 episodes uh, so that's kapow R, and then i'm going to show you comga real quick so comga is set up as a viewer so you can set this up so that you can literally read your comics and um, it's it's beautifully done and uh, when you click read it's gonna come up again in a view just like this and you can just just like you would with like a Kindle or something similar you just touch the next page of the screen and it goes to the next page forward or back and when you get to the end of one comic book you double tap and it takes you to the next one so it's beautiful I did try this in audio bookshelf just to see if it would work. So I've got audio bookshelf set up with a separate comic books thing. The only thing was when you get to the end of the first comic book, it doesn't go to the next file. So I, it can see all the files in here. Maybe there's a way. I couldn't figure it out. So I found this Kapow R and Kamga combo and it seems to be working absolutely a treat so I'm going to show you how to do that so the first thing you've got to do since these are not official apps is you've got to install Portainer so if you haven't installed Portainer yet just log into your TrueNAS scale and navigate to apps again these aren't going to be official releases so you're gonna to have to go to discover apps and search for Portainer. And Portainer is essentially just a container launcher. Um, so in TrueNAS, everything is now containers. So TrueNAS itself is a container launcher, and then Portainer is a container launcher. You can launch through YAML with a, a custom app, and you can hit the kebab menu here, and you can say, uh, enter the YAML right here. The only reason I don't like this is because it doesn't have a graphic editor and as far as I can tell you need to get everything right on the first try or it doesn't work uh, and then you've got to delete it and try it again. So that's why I really recommend going to Portainer. So in Portainer once that gets spun up you'll see a local group and it's gonna have a lot of stacks already running for all of your current apps. Don't be scared by any of this. I know it's a little intimidating you just click on your local and it has all your stacks listed there. If you want to do a new stack, you click on stacks. And I guess you have to you don't have to have a stack per container, but it kind of keeps it clean for me as I'm experimenting with these and I don't know what I'm going to keep and what I'm going to trash. Um, a lot of people will just have one stack and they will list 
all of their containers and they'll all launch all at once. I'm sure that's a more efficient way to do it, but ever since everything switched to containers, I'll tell you what, my server reboots in about four minutes now instead of 24 minutes to get all of my services running. So this is beautiful. So the first thing we'll do is go into Kapowar. So you'll hit new and then I'm in the edit now, but the new, you'll just name it Kapowar and then I'll leave my YAML file um, down below in the comments, but it's pretty easy. You just end up changing a couple of things. So on this volumes, this is my mount path, you know, forward slash mount and then the name of your pool. And then I have an app data folder. And I think this is the cleanest way to do it moving forward. So I have my share here. So you can see in the app data, whenever I'm launching a new container, I'll just right click and I will add a new folder for whatever I'm doing. So this one I just named Kapowar. And again, that's in my TrueNAS. Separate from my media, I just have one that's called app data and I put everything in there. That way I've got all the configuration files and they're there if it, it just keeps everything from being hidden. So I highly recommend doing it that way. Create an app data folder right at the main level on your pool and just start saving everything in there. So once you've got that updated um, to that path that you just defined, the next one is a temporary download path. So all of my downloads go into a folder called Active DL. Um, and that's just uh, like a remnant of the SAB install that I have. I have everything pointed there. So may as well just point that stuff there as well. And then the final one is the location where you are storing your comics. comics. So I have a media folder and then a comics subfolder under that. So again, everything before the colon is where it is on your server. And then after the colon is what it's going to be called within this container. So if you're searching for your comic book location in this container, it's going to be forward slash media forward slash comics. Um, the next bit you've got to do is define a port that you want this service to run. So I've got mine running on 30048. And then after the colon is the port number that this is looking for. So Kapowar is looking to run on 5656 in that container. So it's going to take everything on this service and essentially forward it over. So when we go to our IP address, colon 30048, as shown up here, this is what you'll get for that instance. So pretty quick and easy. Um, you know, it took me a little bit to figure out what to do, what to put where. So that's why I'm just going to leave this Docker Compose file. So all you've got to change are really those three lines. Ooh, ooh, don't do that. All you got to do is change those three lines and um, and your port, and you should be good to go. Um, I'll get out of here before I mess anything else up. And we'll go to the next one. So the next one, so that was Kapowar, so that's the YAML. Um, once that's installed, you will need to go through a couple of little things. So you don't have to link it. It's not going to be in Prowler to link to your other services or anything for your Usenet because, again, we're not using Usenet. We are uh, just kind of using, it's got a lot of downloading stuff built in here in its background. So once installed, you've got to go to Settings General. And then you've got to put in your Comic Vine API key. So I'm going to blank this out because it's my Comic Vine API and I don't want you guys to use it because it can only take a certain number of hits. But it is free. Go to comicvine.gamespot.com, sign up, get your own API key. And right up here in the top, again, I'm going to blur this out. It's going to have a real long API key. You just copy and paste that into your Comic, a comic Vine API key down here and you hit save and you get out of there. So the next thing you need to do is go to media management and then down at the bottom you've got to add your root folder. 
So I've got mine listed as forward slash media forward slash comics because that's what I defined. Whatever yours is, uh, right over here, corner of my face, Oop, down, right about here, you'll see a plus button, add that in, add root folder, hit save, um, and that's all there is to it for that. Um, once you have, like let's say you already have some downloader that you want to add, you can go to volumes, library, import, and then you can hit scan, and it'll scan that root folder that you just defined, and it'll add everything, and they'll show up, and it's going to look surprisingly like this for an existing library. If you don't have anything in here yet, and you just want to add one just to see, go add volume, and you just start typing, and it's going to seem just like radar, where it's going to search for them, uh, and you can add it. So it's going to be very, very familiar on that end. All right, so now that we got that out of the way, uh, that's it. So no Usenet, no torrents, just kind of works right out of the box. Uh, it's slow, direct downloads through a couple of uh, comic book web pages. Um, but yeah, then you can go read them. So to read them, then we need Comga. So Comga is, again, this reader that we have set up as a different service. So I'm going to go over the Portainer view of that. So again, you're just going to do another stack. So you'll go add stack, you'll name it, and then you'll paste in that YAML file here. Since we've already got it, let's see, Comga. Here's my editor. I'll post this down below. Again, for Comga, you've only got to do a couple of things. You'll do your volumes. So you'll do your mount point for the config file. So again, I have my mount and then the pool name and then app data, which again is here visually. And then I've got a Comga folder in here. So I've got all of my database files saved in here. If anything were ever to happen, I can just point it back to there and it'll be like we never left off. Then the next one is the location of your completed comics or your completed download folder path. So we've got that as the mount point then the pool name, media, comics. In, the, in this, I just have it defined as backslash comics. You'll have to set your time zone. So America slash New York, if you're on the East Coast. And then the ports, I have this one directing to 30051 on my machine. So that first number, again, is the port that you would like it to run as. And then this, after the colon is that 25600, leave that alone. That's what Comga is looking for in this container to run this service. The only other thing I had to add, and it was not working properly until I did, was I had to define user group ID and user ID as 568, which is the built-in media user under TrueNAS. So that was the only thing I had to change. Uh, 1000, 1000 didn't even work for whatever reason. I think it's because I have the owners set up for all of my media as that media owner. So however you've got, got your setup, you'll probably need to do the same thing with this 568568. Again, you'll just paste that in here, hit run. It's going to take about five seconds to come up and running. And the next thing you know, you're in here. So you will have to on first load, you'll, you're going to have to register with an email address and a password, which was a little weird uh, that it wasn't just a username. It needed a full, actual, legitimate email address, um, but that's fine. So you'll do that, and then you'll click uh, Add Library. So you click that little plus sign next to the Library button. It'll come up, you'll name it, and then you'll browse in your root. So again, you can just look for it. I've got, boom, comics, and then I've got all of them in here. You'd hit Choose. I already have it added. And once that's chosen, it's going to scan, it'll convert everything that needs to be converted, it'll find all the files, and it makes them really, really easy to run. Um, it's going to search for just about everything it needs, anything that's missing, it'll convert in the background if it needs to. Um, there is a media tab on the left here, which is kind of neat. If you've got any duplicate files, it's kind of cool. It'll show you multiples of stuff that you've got, so you can go ahead and delete one or two of those if I got duplicates there. If it's got any missing posters, it'll show me. Uh, then there's media analysis and uh, somewhere in here there's a bunch of 
bunch of graphs and everything that you can even go to metrics. I mean, it's it's kind of cool. It'll, it'll tell you who's reading what and how long they spent reading, and it it's super neat. Really well done. It's a shame that this isn't a an app in the official true NAS yet, but this is easy enough to set up with the instructions I gave you. Um, and then next thing you know, you can go straight to your tablet of choice and go into your just a regular web browser, hit full screen, and the next thing you know, you are going to be on the sofa just reading dumb kid comic books like you're 10 years old again. Uh, and it is way more fun than you could have ever imagined. Uh, it just works your brain in a different way. Uh, I feel a slightly better than watching cartoons for two hours. Uh, I never thought I'd be this into it. It's worth a shot even if you don't think you'll like comics, even if you got a kid who enjoys comics. It's kind of neat and kind of cool just to be able to do this on your home lab. So give it a shot. Let me know what you think. Uh, like and subscribe so I can keep doing more of these. I appreciate you guys. Have fun. Take care.